ice has melted mm. and the, we can go back into the real world that was horrific you know it's funny because i don't ever want to leave the house ever but when you can't mm. it's just something about that that feeling of being trapped i want to know that i can leave the house if i want to sure 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 i, but I don't want to but then i have to you know it's just that yeah. tricky thing um i'm I almost said I'm Annika. Weird, okay. Yeah, I'm Annika. I'm not Annika. I'm Vesta. And I'm not Vesta. I'm Annika. <laughs> I, I was having a little identity crisis apparently yeah. this morning. Welcome to another week of It Would Seem As Though, the podcast where we clearly don't know who we are. Or talk And we about talk about anything. anything, everything, and nothing. Mostly. Nothing. Yeah, we got a whole lot of nothing on, on board for you today. Yeah. But I'm really, so we had, those of you who are in the hood know that we had horrific weather yeah because it started out just a little light snow that was cute mm-hmm. and then it froze yeah, yeah. and then it free it was freezing rain and, then it, and it literally our backyard looked like some kind of archaeological dig because you could see the layers of ice yeah and it I was, was like horrid. this is never gonna thaw no and now amazingly of course it did thaw you know but i i'm telling you i wasn't sure that it was going to right uh-uh. I was like, this is going to take centuries, and well, we're probably going to find the bones of a velociraptor or something. You know, in there. and it, yes, it was shitty. It was horrible. But girl, here's the thing: not having water was. I would. I was. Uh, was like, wow, Annika, you really just take for granted having water. You know what I mean? Because not needing, not being able to do anything, like needing to go to your house to get like jugs of water so I could like flush the toilet or you right. know, give our animals water, whatever. Like, oh, like they need water. I know. And, you know, having a dog, one morning I woke up during the whole ice storm and then there was little poopies in the house because I'm sure, like, she, it was an ice skating rink. It wasn't easy for little Ami Jean <laughs> no. to go outside <laughs> and she hated it. And, like, Gavin would go out with her every time to make sure. It was so cute. He'd give her, like, a little talk before she would go out being like, no, you need to be safe because it's slippery down there and I'll go outside to make sure nothing falls on you and, like, whatever. It was very cute, but it was horrific. And then we didn't have internet, which is whatever, but it was still weird. Okay, I want to talk about that for a minute. So we didn't have internet for three days. Yeah. Right? My children acted like they were going to die. End of the world. It was end of the world. Yep. They didn't know how they would survive it. And it became this, like, every ten minutes, oh my god, is it back on you? How am I going to watch my videos? I know. Uh, you know, I was like, I, I hate this, but I did this. Mm-hmm. I became that mom who was like, Listen, uh huh. In my youth, yeah, the it's internet didn't even exist, day. yeah. So, if you know the power went out or whatever, you had to find things to do, and we oh. have power, yeah. So, you could watch a movie on the DVD player, yep. You could draw a picture, you yep. could listen to the radio, you could whatever. All you can't do is go and watch your goddamn YouTube video, yeah. And most of those YouTube videos that my daughter watches are just people coloring pictures. People coloring pictures, watching time lapse of things grow, which is great. But she'll watch the same video about 17,000. Every time she comes to my house, yeah. can I watch YouTube on TV? And so now it's a rule in my house that she can't watch YouTube at all because it's so fucking boring. And well, that, and it, it does. It just repeats. Yeah. And she doesn't change it at the end. Ever. No. And it's like, no. Yeah. Now, there, is a, there are a couple that she watches that are sure. okay, like sure. Dr. Mike. I don't know what that Dr. is. Dr. Mike is this guy who I'm assuming is a real doctor. I don't know. I don't oh, care. Oh, so you make assumptions. Great. I do make assumptions, but it seems reasonable that he calls himself Dr. <laughs> Mike. He wears scrubs. Yeah. Maybe he's a doctor. I'm not letting him operate on me, so it doesn't really matter if he's yeah. a real doctor, but he gives medical facts. But it's like people will do this thing like, I did this thing and this happened, you know, some medical thing. And he'll be yeah. like, well, that didn't happen. And here's why. And sure. here's how. So at least that's semi-educational. Yeah, so yeah. I'm okay with that. Agreed. And she will watch this other one who I don't remember what the girl calls herself. Um, like Sniper Wolf or something. Okay. And it's this girl with long black hair and glasses. You've probably seen her when she's watching it. But And she just watches. She reacts to other people's videos. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I'm like, that's dull. But whatever. Yeah. But she'll watch somebody do a thing and be like talking about it the whole time. And I'm like, okay. Those I can kind of get on board with. Sure. 
But really, watching people color pictures? Or she watches things being put in, like, something that smashes a bunch of different yeah. things. Like, because, as she says, it's satisfying. Yeah. Or she'll be like, that one wasn't satisfying. Like, and I get it. Mm. I do get that. But I don't want to watch it in perpetuity. You know what no. I mean? And, oh, but this has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But, like, also with Grace is if I let her control the TV, she'll start a movie. Halfway through, she's bored and changes oh, yeah. something else. And I said, nor. I said you could pick girl but like you started Aladdin and now at the spicy points you're like going to watch I don't know like some other fucking stupid Disney Channel show like nor put Aladdin back on you know like right. let's finish it and if it was a horrible movie sure we can quit but yeah more often than not know. when she's at home she will start the movie yeah. and then be like I, I want to watch this movie okay fine watch this movie yeah. so she'll start the movie and I will not be paying attention because I'm not watching the movie I'm doing something else and I'll turn and look, and she's on her tablet with her headphones on. It's like, um, huh. <laughs> what happened to watch in the movie? I got bored. Girl. I want to do this. And it's like, um, okay, yeah. but... Well, and, like, anymore, the, in this world, though, people need... Well, I mean, it, it seems regular now that so many people need, like, overstimulation. Yes. You know what I mean? And I get it, to a degree. Like, I will usually have my TV on. Even if I'm, like, Grace and Frankie is on right now for the 27,000th time. Right. Um, and it's on mute right now just so we're not, you know, no copyright infringement. But, um, I love it. And I feel, I couldn't just be here if there was nothing on my TV. If it was just quiet all day, no. You know what I mean? And I guess I could, like, listen to a book or listen to a podcast or whatever. But, like, whatever. Sometimes it's just comforting, you know? Um, podcast? Who listens to those? Gross. Hate them. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, I've been, you know, I've just been in a little rut, so I'm yeah. going to what's comfortable, you know? Well, um, and and with with back to the weather thing, yeah. I literally didn't leave my house for 11 days, Mm-mm. which means I had to reschedule several days worth of hair appointments, yeah. which means I had to find some place to put them, because but the days I was trying to squeeze them into, most of them were already full, yeah. and I'm like, well, here, I can wedge you in here and there and the other thing, and it's like, it's... So that, to me, was way more stressful than not being able to leave the house, yep. trying to figure out how to take care of my clients yep. and whatever. But I went back to yeah. work yesterday. Mm-hmm. It was fine. The roads were fine. The only tricky part was getting out of the driveway. Okay. Literally. It's but it was, the rest was fine. Yeah. But I did want to share with you. <coughs> right. Um, you know how last week we were talking about how we're probably big babies when it comes to the weather. hmm So our good friend, Lori Lee... Oh, so yeah. just a letter. Okay, yeah. I love that it's titled Ice Ice Baby. I love that. Uh, I started laughing when you thought I would be thinking that you were weather wimps. Uh-huh. Well, what? What? I knew you might think that. In reality, I was horrified to see posts, news articles on the ice storm that hit. I thought I should buy Astra a pair of ice skates so she yeah. could get, make it to work safely. And I also figured your modular probably had frozen pipes. Mm-hmm. Which it did. Yeah. Astra's dad ordered her a space heater Aww. that was supposed to be delivered on Tuesday, but still hasn't made it due to the storms. Mm-hmm. So probably by the time she gets it, we won't need it. Right. You know, uh-huh. Yeah. That tends to be the way. I don't know for sure since I'm not a resident, but I don't think Portland homes are built or insulated Mm-mm. for the weather that you've had lately. No. Absolutely not. Uh-uh. No. Because we don't have this weather. We have some cold weather. We have mm-hmm. some snow. We have some ice. We don't have 15 degree days, several days in a no, row. No, never. And mm-hmm. we had a whole week where it didn't come out of the teens, yep. which is very unusual for us. Yeah. Um, did you see the article on the Portland hero teenager, this may be very sad, but I did not see it, who rescued the infant when a tree hit a utility pole and the, co- and the car that a family had been in or were trying to get in. Mm-hmm. She heard a boom, saw a family being electrocuted. Oh my God. Called 911, saw the baby's head move. The teenager then inched out slowly so that she didn't touch the electrified water and was able to snatch the baby from the father's body. It's a miracle she and the baby survived. Sadly, oh the mother, father, and the mother's brother all died. Oh, my God. Stay safe and warm, Lori Lee. P.S. Now, here's the part that's like, mm, we are babies. Yeah. Uh, with the wind chill, we did end up at a negative 68 below zero last week. We are now at a balmy 18. Ha, ha. <laughs> that's like, horrific. Negative six. That's not even a real number. It doesn't make any sense. No, to it doesn't. And I, when I read that, I was like, we, "Yes, we are big babies." But, because negative sixty-eight. Yeah. But I'm people, sorry, but who lives in it? Lori Lee, uh-huh. what are you doing, girl? For like just nine months of the year. Nine months of the year, they, it's just a tundra. But like, I do think it's so different because I do hate it too when people say, 
Well, what do you think people like in New Jersey do or, you know, whatever, Montana or the Dakotas because it snows so heavily and I do get it that like, of course, but they have either one grown up in it, they're used to it, their cities are ready for it, their buildings are ready for it, but it was weird not having water but also just having my pipes freeze because that's never happened to me in my life right and so and I've, I've grown up with all the like you know leave your water dripping whatever but i've never experienced it and gavin is very smart and turned our water off to the house and then we opened all the drain uh faucets and water trickled out for a while um but then when the water started working again it didn't bust anywhere because there was Thank no water goodness. left in the house. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was frozen elsewhere. Oh, I see. Yeah. So if it had burst, that would suck, but it wouldn't have been in my fucking house. Which was my biggest concern. Right. Because we kept the heat on after that, and we did everything. We, we checked the water regularly, and it just... It was days without water. And then finally it started to come on, and I was like, we can shower in our own house. Like, it was... It was crazy. It yeah, was not weird. having water to mm-hmm. me is a much bigger deal than not having electricity. Uh-huh. I mean, I hate... For some reason, it really stresses me out. It gives me super anxiety to not have electricity. Yeah. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I'm Nothing terrible has ever happened. No. It just does. It gives yeah. me anxiety and whatever. But being without water... Mm-hmm. Even when I know it's a planned out... Okay. Like when they put in the water here... Oh, right. And mm-hmm. so our water had to be off for like... It was a few hours. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't even the whole day. And I was just like, but how do I, if I, I need a drink. I need, yeah. you know, and I had filled up water, you know, pitchers of water, put them in the fridge so I could drink. And I had gallons of water next to the toilet. Mm-hmm. So I was prepared. Yeah. But still. Yeah. You know, it was just like that. Oh, I got to wash my hands. I, you know, calm down. Yeah. You know, but whatever. Right, but, don't get it. you know, and we've lived in our house for 17 years. Mm-hmm. have never had anything freeze. Mm-mm. And our washer and dryer froze. Well, the dryer's fine. The yep. washer froze. Yep. I keep saying washer because you think of them together. But the washing machine, the hoses that go to the washing machine were frozen. Mm-hmm. And then there was frozen bits inside the washing machine mm-hmm. where that water just kind of sits yep. there. And so getting that yeah. undone was quite a fun thing. Yeah. And it froze not once, but twice. Yeah. And it was like, come on. That was crazy. Yeah. yeah. So the drain pipe where the where the water drains out of the machine Mm -hmm. was frozen. And so luckily my machine has just all kinds of sensors. So it just won't work. It just stops. All done. Because I mean, I've had washing machines that are like, "Um, oh, the pipe doesn't, it doesn't, it just keeps pouring out. And water's (laughs) flowing everywhere. And it's like, okay, now my garage is flooded. And that garage has been flooded so many times from my old washing machine that I'm like, oh God, not that. But 17 years we've been in this house. First time. Yeah. And so, it was yeah, crazy. it was kind of severe. It, and the, the scariest part to me... It was me severe up in here. ...is that it snowed for a minute, which was fine. The snow's not the, the issue, but then it was just layers and layers of ice. And that's super scary because walking on it, like, I don't break it. Gavin doesn't break it. You know what I mean? Just be, yeah. our, like, our yeah. weight on it. It was weird. And not only that, the wind was so incredibly high yeah. that you could hear it screeching. But not only that, there are so many trees. We we live in a little tiny forest, essentially. There well, are so many do. large trees around us. I'm like, outside being like, any one of these fucking trees could hit my house. You know what I mean? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so, um, 15 years ago, this month, mm-hmm. when a tree did land on my house, so it was a tree at the east end of my house in the neighbor's yard. Uh, We had had three weeks of snow, which again, not usual for Mm -hmm. us. And then when it all melted, of course, the ground was like it is now. It was just all spongy and gross. Well, then we had a huge windstorm. Mm -hmm. And the the 80 foot tall Mm -hmm. fir tree in the neighbor's yard fell directly onto our garage, but it split it in half at the peak. But also it landed on the chimney. Broke the chimney, whatever, but the chimney stopped it from landing on my bed. Yeah. Because my bed is right behind that. You know, it's like whatever. So that was terrifying. But it was like, you know, that now, because of that, I have total PTSD. Yeah. Every time there's a windstorm, I'm like, trees are going to fall in my house. They're going to kill my children. Mm-hmm. You know, blah, 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 whatever. Well, so we're sitting in the living room the other day and the... It was still, you know, frozen, whatever, but we have, we're having the windstorm. Yeah. And I hear this loud boom, and I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, but I don't know what that was, but it couldn't have been good. No. And a branch, a very large branch. So our trees are all at least 80 feet tall. Yeah. These are not little brand new firs. They're no. ancient firs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Because we live in what's called, what is this? It's the Powellhurst. Uh-huh. Um, um, I, this something the forest. But anyway, we live in a natural kind of uh, forested area. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, so I go outside thinking, well, I'm going to go look. Well, I couldn't get outside. Nope. I opened the garage door and took a little half a step out. And I'm like, oh, no. No, it's ice. And so Parker gets a shovel and uses it like a walking stick and yep. goes to the side of the house and sees that a very large branch has broken off, hit this pipe on the side of the house where all the electrical wires go through the pipe, uh-huh. like a little conduit thing, and has broken it. Uh-huh. So it's now at a you know, 45 An degree angle. angle. Yeah. And then three more very large branches broke off, oh. hit power lines, yep. didn't take any power out, thank God. Praise. But I was all... What the yeah. when you know one of them landed on the roof and I mm-hmm. thought well that's it it's gonna tear up my brand new roof that I haven't even paid for yet yeah but luckily you know knock wood it did I not. know girl it was horrific yeah. I hated every minute but now we're kind of back to this normal Oregon winter where it's yeah. wet and mushy and yep you know Which and is not fun. freezing it's like forty degrees yeah and I'm good I'm good with the wet I'm good with the rain I will never complain ever again bitch. I would rather have that than ever do what it did. However, no. if anybody wants to send us $40 million, we did find a house in San Diego that we want to live in. Girl, did we? <laughs> God. This house is ridiculous. Yep. And it literally, I mean, I looked at it, it's like $39 million. I love that. And, I mean, first of all, what kind of house is worth thirty nine? What's crazy to me is that on Zillow you can see kind of the last sale. Mm-hmm. You can look at the history of the house. The last sale of that house was like four million. Mm-hmm. So they went from four million to thirty nine million. Yeah, see? I get inflation, but come on. But this house, seven bedrooms, eight bathrooms, mm-hmm. uh, almost eight thousand square feet, and the entire back side of the house is glass and looks at the ocean. No big deal. Oh, with an outside shower with a pool with a hot tub, like with a multi car garage. An outside po- shower. On both floors. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because the upstairs bathroom, you could walk outside and take a shower if you wanted to. Yep. And I, Gavin and I were, like, doing our little fantasy about it. We would just, like... We would only need technically two bedrooms. We would share one, but it would be like this. It would still be bigger than my fucking house now. Yeah, your house could actually fit... Inside of it. Like, in a corner of the deck. Yeah, but I want to live in the house. What the fuck do you think? Well, <laughs> you I think know, I but we could bring in... your house and use it for, like, a pool house. Oh, yeah. We'll just take it down there. We'll yeah. have someone haul it down. It's going to be the guest house. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, uh, seven bedrooms, that's perfect. There's how many people in our family? Seven that... bedrooms and eight bathrooms. But then it was says like... says to me, I need someone to clean. Sure. But, but if you can afford a $40 million house, girl, you can afford house. But also, I kept thinking, oh, seven people, seven bedrooms, perfect. But I'm like, you and your husband share a bedroom. Yeah. And Gavin and I share a bedroom. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, we don't so need seven bedrooms. That's only two bedrooms. Yeah. And each kid could have their own. Mm-hmm. And then turn one into an office or a study or whatever. Yeah. And you... Yeah. Yeah. Are we leaving the old lady here? Because I'm assuming she's come. Oh. No. (laughs) I'm going to leave her in the basement. We'll be out before she notices. Oh, okay. Good. And then she'll come upstairs and be a whole new family. Right. She'll be like, who are these people? They bought the house, but you were included. (laughs) Old lady included. (laughs) Listen. Yeah, I love it. I thought I could get away with it. There are days. Girl, I know. (laughs) I want you to know yesterday when I was over there talking to you, waiting for a little delivery... And she's holding, like, a candy wrapper and some other junk food wrapper and a can of cat food. And you, you were talking to her about what she had e- asked her if she had eaten. She was like, I don't remember. Talked about how she had a cupcake and chocolate. You told her that. And then she repeated it back to you, like, new information. Right. And was still holding a can of cat food. And she's like, well, I didn't eat the cat food. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> like, I am sore confused. Like, yeah. it was interesting. Yeah. You know? Typical day. I know. And honestly, part of me, I'm just like in my head grinning because I'm like, the fuck is happening? But I'm also like, Grandma, no shit, you didn't eat the cat food. Like, yeah, I hope it doesn't ever come to that. If it comes to that, then we have bigger issues, madam. Yeah. Yeah. I know she thinks cat food is like every animal can eat it because she feeds it to her fucking chicken. But like, you can't. No. And I try to tell her, you know, that I've done research and it's not good for the chicken. She doesn't care. Mm mm. Listen, on a completely different topic. Yeah. I want to read this news story that is infuriating and then uplifting at the same time. Oh, good. Okay. So here's the headline. Are you ready? ready. Oklahoma donut shop that was firebombed by homophobic homophobic neo-Nazi arsonist throws a drag party to celebrate his conviction. Oh, I love that. Yeah. 
So, uh, an <coughs> Oklahoma donut store that was firebombed for hosting a drag event has celebrated with the community that stood by as the man who attacked it was jailed for five years. Now, five years, I don't think, is near enough. Mm-mm. But, whatever. The donut hole, clever name, mm-hmm. in Tulsa, threw open its doors and handed out 700 free donuts on Saturday as a neo-Nazi, Kobe Dale Green, was convicted in federal court for the hate crime that occurred in October of last year. Uh, he is thought to have been responsible for smashing the store's windows days after hu- uh, hundreds came to an exhibition of an LGBT art uh, at the popular hangout, an art show. Uh, but he was convicted for the for another attack days later when he battered the door down with a baseball bat before hurling in a flaming Molotov cocktail. Oh, say Now, I'm going to tell you, they have him on video doing it. So His face is masked, but come on. Yeah, yeah. You know, people know who you are. Uh, today is about giving donuts to the community and making it clear that we are here and we are everywhere, said drag performer Josie Lee Terrell. Okay. I was like, you go, Josie. You, yeah, uh, I love that. Investigators yeah. found fl- notes and flyers pinned to the door after the attacks, which left staff and customers in fear for their lives. Uh, one was a reference to Ecclesiastes 3, verses eight, 1 through 8. Uh, KJV, I don't know what that means. King, King James, James Version. Version. Yeah. While another read, the only virus is LGBT, and showed a man holding another by the throat. A third Weird. pledged war against the LGBT groomers with a picture of a person holding... Uh, choked by a pride flag emblazoned bandana. Okay. It's like, really? Yeah. When everything happened, it was scary. And I didn't do drag for three months because I was scared to go out and do anything else. I didn't want to be harmed, said Lee Terrell. Well, who would? So, uh, the store owners, Sarah Swain and Brian Hunter, pledged not to be intimidated after the first attack. And a GoFundMe was created which raised more than $24,000. So their community clearly supports them, and I yeah. love that. Yeah. But this man uh, put um, a, what do you call it? a post on Facebook that said, um, wait, blah, blah, blah. Oh, God, where'd it go? Okay. I wanted to, sorry. I, it's just a long article, and the problem is it has all these pictures and shit in the middle and ads and stuff, and it's like, could we just have the article? No. But his basically his post was it was time to, you know, clear out these people because they're... Yeah. Yeah, it's like, really? Because they're awful and gross. I and know. Groomers. And I get so sick of this whole groomer nonsense. Yeah. It's like, queer people are not groomers. Mm-mm. First well, of all, I don't know a lot of, especially gay men, I don't know a lot of gay men who even like children. Yeah. Oh. So they're certainly not grooming them to sleep no. with them. Yes, there are people who do. Mm-hmm. Those are, you know, child molesters. That's not a queer person. Well, and but here's the thing, guys. I want to tell you something. Is that somebody that we consider to be a bad person or a criminal has multiple identities. They're not just a bad person. They're not just a criminal. They can be white. They can be black. They can be Asian. They can be disabled. They can be queer, not queer. Like, the fact but the blanket statement that, like, drag queens or queer people or groomers is a fallacy and it's just wrong because it's a generalization and it's stupid it's not even a valid argument because again show me cases in which drag queens are grooming children and I'll show you many more and where the catholic church is doing the same fucking thing and guess what I'll actually have cited sources and you won't but like I, I, we need to get away from the ideology of, like, black and white thinking. Like, someone can be... It's the whole idea of, like, narcissism, an abuser, right? Like, someone can beat the shit out of me, but they're nice to people, so people only see them in a good light, right? Yes. Then yes. I seem crazy. Not that I know any of this from personal experience. No, but of course not. You know what I mean? Like, people have multiple identities. And so I think it's, it's important to understand the nuance of people, you know? Well, yeah. Well, and the other thing is... You know, when you talk specifically about drag performers, mm. are drag performers all good people? No. no. They're humans like everybody else, so you're going to find a cross-section. But are any of them groomers? No. Most likely not. No. Well, and I, I hate that, too. They're like, well, are, you know, oh, we'll see this drag queen's a bad person, so all drag queens are bad people, right? But right. I'm like, you, hey, white trash Tanya, how many white people do you know that are fucking awful people? Probably most of your family. You probably hate most of them. You don't then just assume that all white people are horrible. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like it is such an interesting 
it's like mental gymnastics to, to, to be to hate a group of people or to enact forms of oppression against a people takes so much fucking energy. Do you well, know what especially, I mean? Especially, you know, when you use God as your excuse for mm-hmm. doing it. You know, it's like, I am going to use the name of this deity mm-hmm. that is supposed to be all about love yeah. to hate people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Isn't you know, sense? I would like you to reason through that, please. Yeah. I would also like, okay, but so... there isn't a reason. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I went to church my whole growing up life. Yeah. And so I've read the Bible. Sure. And so most Christian churches now uh, are strictly New Testament, mm-hmm. right? And so they say, you know, because God had a, he had a makeover. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then there was the New Testament. He's yeah. all, I'm all about love and peace Different. and forgiveness. Yeah. Even though I used to be mad all the time and very sure. narcissistic and you stopped worshiping me, I was going to kill you. Yeah. But I've changed. So, which makes total sense. Yeah. But when they want to, when they want to find something, they always reach back to the Old Testament. Yeah. Even though they don't use it for anything else. Mm -hmm. And they always use like, they've cherry picked one verse. Mm Mm-hmm. One verse that, by the way, only started being that verse in the King James Version. Yeah. And King James was, uh, he specifically paid people to alter it so that it fit his, you know, his beliefs and whatnot. So, if you're going to pick out that one verse, that mm-hmm. one sentence in the Old Testament, mm-hmm. then you have to go with all the sentences that go around it. Yep. Like, that it's okay to sell your daughter into slavery. That it's, you, if your neighbors are not uh, respecting the Sabbath, it's okay to kill them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, whatever. It's, there's a lot of things that it's They're like people go, silly. well, those are stupid and outrageous. Yeah. But this one is fine? Yeah, it's, it makes sense. I, yeah. Yeah, girl. You know, I, like, cherry picking. No. Cherry picking. I know. It is It is very trying, though. You know what I mean? Like, the idea of using a religion as, like, chosenness or God's favorite or what the fuck ever. Like, I love mythology more than most people, but I'm not going to use it to justify the, the atrocities of today. I'm not going to use it to justify how much I hate somebody. Do you know what I mean? I think that that's bonkers and uh, I, I think it's just like a superiority complex where you think God chose you and your people or you know what I mean whatever it is your group right. for you know manifest destiny taking over the United States of America from native people was all God manifest destiny is that's right. the whole idea right. Right? right and like I, I just don't understand the concept if you are a religious person I don't understand the concept of hating other people who just don't believe what you believe. Like, they could be decent people. They could be, you know, they could volunteer and donate money and do right. goodwill and all of this, but they believe differently than you, and so you, they're they're not to be trusted, right. or right. they're wrong. Like, it's, it's just... You're trash. It's antithetical to, be, to religiosity to me. I don't... It just doesn't make... Listen to you with your big words, antithetical mm. religiosity. But I just feel like it's... It goes against what most religion preaches. Do you know what I mean? Especially if we're talking about, like... Judeo Christian Islamic religions because all of them are so interconnected and yeah. all of them are like cousins to each other. Yeah, so if you want to go with a religion where it's like it's okay to hate folks, go back <coughs> to great ancient Greek mythology yeah. where the gods were like, uh, I will fucking come down there and strike you dead yeah. because you said something negative about me. And you, you said that you were more beautiful than me. I know. I'm you said you were a better weaver than I was. Eyes. Yeah, girl. Whatever. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It wasn't even the girl who said it. This is mythology. Um, you know, the whole story, what was her fucking name? It was an Ethiopian princess. Her mother said, you're more beautiful than Aphrodite. Aphrodite said, what did she say about me? And then what she took her say? daughter, took her daughter, and I think Perseus saved her, but chained her to a fucking rock in the ocean and sent the Leviathan after her. This little girl had nothing to do with it. Her mother just said right. she was more right. beautiful. But and so how rude. she was saved, blah, blah, blah. But it's the same thing. Like the whole, uh, the whole mythology of the spider in Greek mythology yeah. is... Arachne, who was a weaver, said somewhat. She said she was a better weaver than Athena. Athena turned her into a spider. Well, then there's no. also the story oh. of Medusa, <clears throat> oh. Oh. who Her lived in the was. temple of Athena, Athena mm-hmm. and then was raped by Poseidon. By Poseidon, and then they were like, "Oh, you've you've you know desecrated my temple." And I'm going to turn you into a gorgon. Wait a minute, she mm-hmm. was the victim, mm-hmm. and now you're going to make her. Horrible. The monster? Yeah. And it's like, that doesn't make... But if you want to have some sort of 
gods and goddesses that hated each other and hated other people. Girl. And those are the ones. Let's go back to this the ancient god world. That, this god that you claim to believe in, this god that you've read his book, or I bet none of them have. Uh-uh. It's supposed to be all about love and forgiveness. Yeah. That's the whole preaching mm-hmm. of the thing. And if you listen to any of the teachings of Jesus, yeah. it's all about love, yeah. forgiveness, and how we can get along in the world and blah, blah, blah. And I was talking to someone the other day, uh, my client, Grace, was saying how um, in most of the the religion today, the, um, you know, like the big mega churches and mm-hmm, the whatever, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they believe that if you are wealthy, it's because God has made it so. Right. You have done something right, and God has rewarded you by making you yeah. rich. If you're poor, clearly you're not doing the right thing. And it's yeah. like, wait a minute. So wealth is ordained by God? Yes. When in the Bible, it yeah. says it is easier for a rich man to, to go through the eye of a needle. Yeah. Or no, it's re- easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. Yeah. This is, this is something that... So how, how is that... Girl, uh, or, you know... Because it's Protestantism. And so that, that thing you just said where if you're wealthier, you, you tech, quote unquote in their eyes work harder and you're frugal and you take advantage of like monetarily, that's the Protestant ethic. That is an actual thing that's studied in religious studies and sociology. It's saying that if you're poor, you're unworthy of being like, uh, admitted into heaven and you have to, because God likes people who work and God likes people who are independent and can take care of themselves, but also they can be wealthy because they're not going to spend their money and they're not going to be vain in that way. Right. So that's, that is called the Protestant ethic. I'm sorry, but the people who are that wealthy usually, I'm sorry, but they are building like these mega churches Mm -hmm. that are ridiculous. Yeah. 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 What? Why? Um, why yeah. do you need that? Well, and it's it, but that's like also that's why that's why in the United States of America the the idea of being wealthy makes you a quote unquote more deserving person. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, and that's just part of capitalism that's ingrained into our society. But when we think about it, the United States of America, the legal nation, was founded by Protestants, and so it's not so far-fetched that they would inject the United States with, you know, the Protestant ethic. That's also why the, why why people who have such a strong work ethic, it's just indoctrination into the United States. You're being indoctrinated right. into a, a religious body has decided it to get into heaven. That's what work ethic is. That's why, because other nations have shorter work weeks, make you take vacation, have socialized health care, right? We don't have to work until we're 70, right? But it, it's all because of religion. It's because of this nation being founded. And people want to talk about, like, it wasn't. And it's not a religious nation. And, you know, the, the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, all of, all of those people weren't even Christians. But for the most part, they were, like, deists. They believed there was a God, but they didn't believe what Christians believed, right. you know? Right. So to have this nation where it's, if you are wealthy, if you make money, if you're productive, you may, you're a valuable person. The mo- that's why... Again, they're so tied to capitalism because they work you and you're only valuable when you can work. And the moment you can no longer work, you're disabled or you're useless, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, but so all of that's very intertwined. So yeah. that whole ideology of like, you make more money, you're wealthy, you're going to get into heaven. That's right along with capitalism and Protestantism. Yeah. But of course, the problem being, whenever you have that kind of wealth, mm-hmm. there's as a rule, not always, of course, but very often corruption. Mm. I mean, you look at even these ministers, like Jerry Falwell, yep. mega church, mega following, send me your money so we can do all the good things and whatever, out sleeping with prostitutes, mm-hmm. you know, and then cried, oh, I have sinned, which you know, honestly, and whatever, forgive me, I have sinned. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We, you know, and then when the, uh, he did the, I have sinned again tour, mm-hmm. it was like, come on. Honestly. Yeah. Come on. You know, it's like, I don't care if your choice is to sleep with a sex worker. Yeah. That's fine. Do you I don't care. Sex work but work. don't condemn other people mm-hmm. for that if you're doing the same thing. Yep. Don't condemn homosexuals if you're mm-hmm. sleeping with a boy. If you're tapping your you foot know. on your bathroom stalls, bitch. Right. Yeah. You know, don't. I don't care. My uh, <coughs> morals and my ethics are not tied up in that kind of thing. No. Sex work is work. Yeah. You know, homosexuality, whatever. It's fine. But don't come out of the gate saying, this is wrong, this mm-hmm. is a sin, this is horrible, and then yeah. you're doing it. Yeah. 
Because that just makes you a hypocrite. Yeah. And then most of these guys, if you look at their lives, they live these really lavish, ridiculous lives. Yeah. You know, and I, I, it makes me think of like uh, Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. Yeah. Now you know, I am a Tammy Faye stan. Same. Love her. Same. Same. Uh, and I love her for so many reasons. R.I.P. Girl. Yeah, I know. But her husband mm-hmm. was a piece of garbage. Yeah. Who, one, had an affair with his secretary. Love it. You know, mm-hmm. cool beans. Yeah. But he also bilked millions of dollars out of his followers. Of course he did. What's really gross to me is they had this, I don't even remember what it's called, but they had built this uh, big resort, which was going to be, you know, like water slides and all these things and a lot of housing yeah. for these people who sent in their money every month and, you know, bought into it. Well, they built it. They never finished it. And it's still is sitting there rotting. And it is buildings and buildings and buildings all I just sitting that. there rotting. Yeah, hate because, that. Because uh, Jim Baker Jr., who uh, is also a minister, but he's a minister to, like, the people. Yeah, he, he does his Heavily ministry, tattooed. Like, he does yeah, his ministry, like, in a bar with, that he rents out on, like, a, day, a morning that they're closed, like Sunday morning or yeah. something. You know, whatever. And he ministers to the people in the street. He ministers to people who need him. And he and his wife live very modestly. Yeah. And his father hates it. I love that. Hates it. Yeah. it. It's like, you can't be part of my church if you're going to do this shit. Because you're saying that queer people are okay. And drunk people are okay. And divorced people are okay. Yeah. It's like, well, you're all those things except not queer. But yeah. whatever. And it's like, that doesn't make sense to me. I mean, None that. of that makes sense to me. It's like, this young man, well, he's not a young man anymore has been out doing what I consider real Christian work. Yeah. Agreed. You know, he's been working with folks on the street, working with folks with drug addiction mm-hmm. or alcohol addiction or whatever, and trying to lift people up instead yeah. of, well, you can be part of my church because you have money. Yep. And I, by the way, you shouldn't have money because you should have sent it all to me already. Sure. Yeah. Well, and you, you know, know, that's the whole idea. Heritage Village is what it was called. Okay. I knew it would come to I've me never if I heard thought of it long enough. Yeah, um, look it up sometime or watch. There's a documentary. I don't know if it's still available. There was a documentary on, uh, I think it was Netflix, about okay. um, Jim Baker Jr. Okay, yeah, I love him. I remember reading yeah, a little about him. He's great. Um, well, and the thing about being rich, too, is like there is a, you know, people say like money doesn't, can't buy you happiness. Well, there is a number. There is a number that if you had that much money, the, the alternative being having socialized everything, right? But if you had that much money, it's something like $75,000 a year, right? Annually. to That would pay for everything. You could live comfortably and never have to struggle, right? And that's just on average, right? So once you are in the hundreds of thousands, the millions of dollars, you don't need any of that. Do you know right. what I mean? Not Absolutely. Every, genuinely, you don't need it. But, but because we live in such a capitalistic... Um, hellscape uh and attaining wealth and getting rich is kind of the goal of everyone you know what i mean and people don't have there's no like retirement a lot of the time unless you put into it and then right absolutely getting older is shittier in the united states there's no health care like all the things are just horrible so like getting rich though once you get based like oh i made a million dollars but you don't think you're rich enough And that's, it's kind of a disease in a way because you make more, you you need to make more and more money to feel worthy. You need to make it to feel self-worth. But there also, I think, is that fear that you're going to lose it all the time. And there is that because a lot of times it reminds me of like the oppressor versus the oppressed, right? Like the oppressor is always in fear because they're doing shitty things. So the moment they take their boot off the oppressed neck, what's going to happen? The oppressor is going to fight back, right? So the moment these rich people, they keep doing corrupt, fucked up, you know, shitty things that are unethical. And so once that's found out though, right? Like they, the moral opinion of them, the social opinion of them goes away. And so it's like very similar. They have to live in fear. That's why I don't think being somebody who like, wants to live on someone else's territory or, you know what I mean? Harming the oppressed or whatever. It's never a good idea. And you will always have to live in fear. You will always have right. to Absolutely. have that uh, looking over the other shoulder because you have stepped on the necks of so many people <clears throat> that like the moment you take that pressure off, they're going to go for your throat. Like, and, and as ha- it should be. And I don't understand condemn. And I would never condemn that because condemning violent resistance to violent oppression is not condemnable to me. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you, if, Absolutely. If there's a bigger, more powerful entity oppressing you, I'm not going to condemn the way you fight back that. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that's the, the thing that always... Okay, I think this is because I grew up poor. Mm-hmm. That I think very practically. And sure. I'm going to take just this one example of, like, um, I remember... <coughs> so, on the show Friends, okay. there came a point where each one of the main characters was getting paid a million dollars an episode. Wow. Yes. That's a million a lot dollars of money. per episode. Because yeah. that show was huge. It was bringing in lots of money, which means it was bringing in billions of dollars yeah. for everyone else. You know, so everybody was getting rich off sure. that show. All right? So, <coughs> if your season is 24 episodes, and yeah. you run for 11 years, and it's constantly on a syndication. Yeah. Because... After a certain point, and it was like in the early to middle 70s, I believe, when uh, that sent those rights, uh, where you would get, and I've <coughs> lost the word for it right now, but where you'd Royalties? get... Royalties? Yeah, like... Paid, whatever. But you'd get money, like every time your show aired, mm-hmm. you would get royalties. Okay. Um, we'll call it royalties. That's not the right word that I'm... But whatever. But it used to be like the people who, like, the people who were on Star Trek mm-hmm. did not get... My, and the Star Trek ran forever. Forever. And those people got paid once. The OG Star Trek. Or just yeah, the OG Star Trek. Okay, okay. Uh, but yeah. people, Gilligan's Island, the shows that were on forever and ever, the Brady Bunch. Yeah. None of those people got that. That's fine. So all of, you know, now, these people, it's like, so, uh, we'll just say, one of Courtney Cox. Okay. So Courtney Cox did Friends for 11 years. Okay. Made multiple million dollars and now still getting paid from this show. Yeah. When I think of things like that, I think what I would do yep. is I would buy a really nice house, not the forty million dollar house because that's a, well, you know that's us kidding and whatever. So twenty four million dollars, let's say per season. Per season, that's two hundred sixty four million dollars, right? For a lot, and of then seasons. residuals. That's what I was trying to think. That's the word. Uh, so and the, but even if it was just what she made during the run of the show, yeah. I would buy a really nice house, yeah. bank a shit ton of money, mm-hmm. make some good investments, and then not worry about it. Because it's like, you don't... She doesn't have to work ever again if she doesn't want to. No. But she wants to. She's doing other things. She does other movies and shows and whatever. Cool. Mm-hmm. But at some point, I would think your little brain would go, I have enough. Well, yeah. I don't have to worry about... You know, am I going to stay on top? Am I going to be this? Am I going to be that? It's like, so naturally, you know, careers flex and, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll have ups and Wax and wane. Wax yeah. and wane. Yeah, yeah. If you have made smart choices with your money, when you make that kind of money, that shouldn't be a big concern. No. But if you're one of those people, as you mentioned, who's like, it's got to be more, more, more all the time and it's never enough and it's never... It doesn't matter what you yeah. do because you're going to spin probably foolishly. Yeah. You're going to... A perfect example. Uh, MC Hammer. Do you remember oh, MC Hammer? Of course. Yeah. Made a bajillion dollars yeah. off his couple hit songs yeah. and instantly became an idiot about it. He had a whole entourage yep. who he paid to take everywhere with him. <coughs> and not long, that money doesn't last long. And so yeah. he pissed away all his money. Yep. He also did things like he re- bought a mansion and then was like, kept redoing it. Why? And it's like, I could get it if it, if it mm-hmm. needed repairs. Yeah. But it's like, well, no, it's, I, it was green last week and I want it blue or whatever. Yeah. Dumb. But he kept redoing it and yeah. like re-carpeting and redo, you know, whatever. So dumb. And it's like, you have had this house for 10 minutes. Yeah. And you, whatever. Well, dumb. And I make yeah. smart choices. Yeah. And I get that some people... Uh, don't have any idea how to make a smart choice. You like you see all those people who are like mm-hmm. the lottery ruined my life. You have these people who are like I don't know what to do with money. Yeah, if you're financially illiterate, which like I wouldn't say that I'm super financially illiterate, I would get a money manager. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I would immediately find somebody yeah. who knew what the fuck they were talking about because I wouldn't want to lose out. I want to go back to Courtney Cox for a second. I know, you know, she gets probably paid mega bucks. She was, you know, being on Friends for 11 years, making almost $300 million, plus residuals, plus whatever. Uh, is that the word you used? Yeah. All of that. But then also, she has been in the Scream franchise in every single movie yeah. since it came out, and that has a huge following. And then she's done all those other things. But I think sometimes, I don't think she's worried that she's not making no, money. No, but I was just using her for an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, but I also think that lots of people don't look at money the same way we do. Do you know what I mean? Like, so it will never be enough. But I think sometimes for actors, they just 
some of them actually enjoy it and maybe it's it's not really sure. about make maybe I don't because I don't know feasibly how much a big star gets paid and what that actually looks like you know what I mean like that doesn't make yeah. any sense to me because that's an astronomical amount of money um but yeah it's uh, I I would wonder what it would be like to live and never worry about money yeah, that I would don't, be I don't understand. I can't comprehend that, really. No, me neither. Uh, but, like, according to <coughs> my good friend, Viola Davis... Oh, right. One percent of the people who act mm-hmm. are making wealth. Right. Most people are barely making the rent. Most people weird. are doing, like, a little show on Broadway or a local play or maybe they get a <coughs> commercial here and there. Yeah. And so they're making a little bit of money and they're getting teeny residual, like a commercial... Every time it airs, you get some kind of residual. And so it's like, yeah, a few bucks, whatever. But it's only the, like, the very rare who are Meryl Streep, who are, you know, Jennifer Aniston, who are Courtney Cox, who are, like, Mm -hmm. absolutely recognizable from anybody. Yeah. And have made this extraordinary wealth. Because most don't. Most actors... Do do it because they that's all they can do. That's like this is what I do. This is my life. Yeah. Whatever. And most of them don't make it a living. Most of them have second jobs. So, which I know was not really the point here, but that you know, it's like I, the idea, I love the idea that you could have enough money that you could go. You know what? I don't have to work. I don't have to worry. I my house is paid for. You know, whatever. I'm good. I'm solid. Yeah. I don't think that's a reality for most people. And I don't think it would ever be a reality for me, but I would love that. Yeah. But again, because we did grow up so poor, it does make me think much more logically and more frugally about money. Mm -hmm. And I think though, then as we've talked about before, like if I had a huge, like big giant lottery winnings, I would give most of it away. Yep. Because if you have that kind of money that you can positively affect other people's lives, why wouldn't you do, do it? it? Because yeah. you're not going to be hurting. Mm-mm. And I was, uh, one of my friends who is actually a money manager uh, for, a, you know, big bank, was saying that <coughs> if you have, like, even a million dollars in the bank, that just the interest off that yeah. is going to keep you going. I love that. You know, and it's like, so you wouldn't even have to touch it most yeah. of the time. Yeah. You know, if you're smart with your money, yeah. But that's the problem is most people aren't smart with their money. No. So, whatever. Yeah. You know, when, I don't... Mm. No, I get it. I get yeah. it. I, and I see, I think the first time... When I got my first job, like, actual job working at Old Navy, I remember getting a paycheck and it was nothing but being like... Ah, like, I had money and I went and bought... I spent all of it. You right. know, foolishly. Right. It's what you do. Yeah. But now, like, I... There hasn't been a time in years that I have had no money... You know what I mean? Where I, maybe, like, oh, I couldn't afford to go, like, on vacation or whatever, but I wasn't broke. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't completely flat broke. Yeah. Um, and that, to me, was, like, such a step in the right direction. You know, there was a point where I had to file for fucking bankruptcy. Yeah. Like, Same. there was a point where I had, like, uh, tens of thousands of dollars in debt. And, like, Same. was kind of screwed. Yeah. And, and growing up with no, not really anybody to teach me or show me or help me, you know what I mean? Uh, who would that have been? And exactly, that's what I'm saying. Who but, in our lives had any money or any sense no. as to how to make or keep money? Exactly, so I didn't grow up with that. But it's like the same thing with going to at college. I didn't have anyone to help me figure out what that meant or navigate that or, you know what I mean, like fill out financial aid or whatever. I didn't, I was very foolish when I initially went to college because, again, I didn't grow up with, like, being the first generation is weird because again, you have to do it yourself. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think being in a spot where I'm like, okay, well I'm not wealthy by any means. It's not, but I'm not struggling, you know? Yeah. I was talking to my cousin Amy about that <coughs> very thing one day. Cause I said, it feels weird to not struggle mm-hmm. and to be middle class. I mean, even though we're probably lower middle class, sure. but it was like, I, because, you know, the way that I grew up and the way that I lived many of my years, you know, of my adult life, it is a weird thought that it's like, I now can pay my bills. Mm -hmm. And at the end of like writing that last check for that, because I pay them twice a month, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going, oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm, 
upside down. Mm-hmm. I don't have any money. I can't pay this bill. Who am I going to not pay? Yeah. You know, because I have years of that. Yeah. Because of me being a poor money manager. Yep. Because of me not understanding even how finances work, how yep. credit worked. I'm going to tell you what. My very first credit card, I got a visa when I was in my mm, middle 20s. I was probably 24, 25. I got a visa and the limit was $1,000. Now I was like, thought I hit the fucking jackpot. Yeah. $1,000. And that was a lot of money then. Yeah. You know, and I was like, I'm going to use this for emergencies. I'm going to buy one little purchase at the beginning just because it'll be fun and exciting and whatever. But then emergencies, bullshit. Yeah. I spent up to that $1,000 pretty damn quickly. And then it was like, oh shit. Trying to pay off that $1,000 took me forever. And I think now, How weird that is because we now use a visa to pay almost everything and then pay it off every month. You know, and it's like... Because you get money at the end of the year or something? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's all... Yeah, that's exactly why. I mean, like this year I'm getting a check for almost $900. Wow. And I haven't paid interest on this card ever because we always pay it off every month. Yeah. But it's like, I've it's sometimes $5,000 a month. Yeah. Because it's all these payments and stuff. But it's not like I'm being foolish and going no, out no, no. and buying, you know... Yeah. New furniture and, and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not being dumb. Yeah. But it's just such a change that there are days where I'm like, this doesn't feel real. Yeah. Because, again, not wealthy by any means. No. Not even, you know, beyond middle class. Yeah. But I'm not struggling. Yeah. And for the first time in my life have enough money in the bank that should something go awry, yeah. I have more than one. I can make a house payment okay. if we, you know, didn't yeah, have yeah. money. Yeah. You know, say, I'm not going to be... It couldn't go on very long. <clears throat> sure. Right. But, you know, it's all... I, it's so funny because it's just all relative. Oh, The course. whole money yeah. thing. Totally. You know, because I feel, in comparison to my childhood, I feel rich. Oh, agreed. I mean, <laughs> I, Girl. I have a house. Yep. Uh, I... Have a, car, a nice yeah. car. Yeah. You know, it's nothing fancy. It's a Kia. Whatever. But it's new. Girl. You know, but as a child, we always had some piece of shit car yep. that was held together by uh, good thoughts and duct tape, you know, whatever. <laughs> and I couldn't even take my test for my driver's license oh. until I was 19 because yeah. no one had a car. Yeah. That was, because they had to, you know, all the things had to be working. Yep. The Lights, horn, brakes, the blinkers, all, all those things. Or they wouldn't let you take the test. Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, that wasn't any car that we had. Yeah. And it wasn't even until I was 19, I borrowed a car. Yeah. And I was like, can I use your car? You know, it's like, whatever. Yeah. But that's the reality of my growing up. So I have a car that I know when I get in is going to start. Yep. I know it is not going to break down somewhere. Mm -hmm. These are the things that are important to me now. It's not, I have to have the fanciest car. Yeah. Because I don't. I have a Kia Sorento. Mm-hmm. You know? And I don't have to have the fanciest house. And the furniture in my house is all secondhand because I have children and dogs. Yeah. And if it wasn't secondhand, it would be trashed. And then I'd be mad that my brand new expensive furniture Maybe was trashed. trashed. Yeah. You know, I, it's so funny. I know we're short on time. But, right? We're close to being done. But I um, was just talking about this. You know, for a long time... As an adult, I didn't feel like I was an adult. And I don't... There are times I don't feel like that now. I feel very like I'm an imposter. But I was talking to Gavin. I will be 35 next week. And I... What? Your birthday's coming up? I hadn't heard that. Did you know? I did not. Um, But like being 35 and I have, you know, a house. My car's almost paid off. And I have two degrees. And I have a healthy relationship. And I have no debt. And I go on vacation a couple times a year. And I don't feel so much like I'm not... I haven't done anything anymore. Do right. you know what I mean? Right. I feel like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, you you have made it to adulthood. Not unscathed. You know what I mean? But oh, you made no. it to this point where now you don't feel like you're not doing anything. Or you haven't right. done anything. Right. And, and, you know, and I got to go on adventure. And I got to go explore the United States, which don't do it. It's boring. But, you know, I got to have... <laughs> I, I got to go... Can't. Can't, uh, can't. Don't do it. It's not yeah. fun. But like, I got to do a lot of things I never. Coming from Carlton, a town of a thousand people, I never thought and ever I'd be able to do. And I got to do it. And I'm here now, and I feel accomplished. And I think that, again, relativity. I don't. Granted, my career isn't anything yet, and I don't have a huge savings, but I still have something to show, right? And that's what makes me feel like you're an adult. You're accomplished. You've done something. You know. And that's like, what else do I need? 
I've done it all. Absolutely. I'm night, going to bed, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I certainly have um, accomplished more than I thought that I would. Agreed. Because um, I also was surrounded, not only, you know, were we poor, but we were surrounded by people who just had, like, some job that they didn't love, didn't mm-hmm. even want to do, but it was what yeah. they could get. But that is how all the people that we knew, yeah. parents, family, cousins, whoever, the job they had was a job they could get. Yep. It wasn't, yep. I set out to get this job because this is the job I love. This is the career I've wanted. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until, it wasn't that long ago, I was talking to one of my friends about, because uh, she was going, she changes jobs every so many years for a better job. Yeah. And it's always her choice. Mm-hmm. It's never like, well, I hope I get this job. She gets whatever job she wants because she is a unicorn. She is so smart and so talented and does whatever, you know. Yeah. But she was talking about how, like, when she applied for this job, that she said, well, I want this money. I want this schedule. I want this. And laid out all the things she wanted. Yeah. And then it was like, but I started at this price because I was going to negotiate. Yeah. And it was like, wait, negotiating. The thought of having a job that, one... Wanted you, mm-hmm. like, without you applying for the job, yep. but then was going to negotiate a salary with you. It was just, like, so foreign to me. Yeah. I've seen it on TV. Yeah. And, the, you know, they write a number on a piece of paper and slide it across the table, yeah. which I always think is so stupid. Yeah. But now, tell me what that number is. I want to know. Yeah. But the idea that you could have a job that you then go, well, yeah, that's that's cute, but I want this money. Yeah. And it's like, what? That's crazy, right? Yeah. I know. I know. It absolutely is. You know, the other thing is a couple of things I've learned about money is it's absolutely okay to ask people, like, if you're saying, I want to do the same job you're doing, what are you making? Mm -hmm. That that's okay. Yeah. Because we were raised, I was raised, to you don't ask people about what they make. It's rude. Yep. I think so much of that really is because they didn't want anybody to say, I don't want you to feel bad because you're making pennies compared to what I'm making. Yeah. Or... They wanted to keep it all so secretive, which I don't understand. No. But I know companies want to keep it because if I'm paying you, you know, twenty dollars an hour and I'm paying this other person who's doing the same job twenty five dollars an hour, yeah. I don't want you to find that out. Because then you're burn gonna be your like, Where's down. my twenty five dollars? Yeah, an hour? Right, yeah. Or whatever. Right. You know? And so I think that's a big that's an important thing. One yeah. is finding out what your job should pay or what the median yeah. range is of that job and Asking for that. Yep. Knowing your worth. Yep. I And you know what? I'm going to say something that could be controversial. I don't give a shit. Wait, um, you? Controversial? I've never. She's been radicalized. Um, I, it has come to my attention more and more the older I get that most things that we are taught by adults when we're children is, it's, it shouldn't be what we consider to be truth. And here's my examples. Don't talk about how much money you make. Don't talk about religion. Don't talk about politics. If we talked about religion, if we talked about politics, we wouldn't be in this divisive, fucked up world, right? If we talked about... Because it would normalize it. Normalize it. Um, If we talked about how much money people made, the pay gap would be diminished substantially, right? So if we talked about these things that everyone thinks is taboo or controversial or whatever, we'd be in a society that was more equitable, that included more people, because getting the the lived experience and the, the testimony, essentially, from people about what, you know, they have gone through or what they make will, is a great equalizer. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. But, but we, but people, we don't teach, we were never taught that. Don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. It's inappropriate. It makes people uncomfortable. Well, who fucking cares? You know what I mean? Like who cares? I don't care. Yeah. We should, you should want people to have knowledge, right? If we were a society that was more focused on like people actually gaining knowledge opposed to people gaining wealth, we would be much better off than we are. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, one of the things uh, one of the companies that T worked for, <coughs> it was in their policies that you were forbidden to talk to someone else about what you made, which is illegal. Or what they, they made, yeah. which I didn't know yeah. that that was illegal. Mm-hmm. But it was like they had it in their policies, so you're like, oh, I could be fired. Well, you could, but then I'm going to sue you <laughs> yeah, because. Yeah. It, but I, uh, one of the people I follow on um, YouTube or TikTok or whichever one they're on, I don't remember, uh, talks about all of these fallacies. That people believe are true. And that was yeah. one of the ones I was like, I had no idea. Right. right. You know, because you hear it all the time. Well, you're not supposed to talk. You're not supposed to compare numbers. You're not. 
you're not supposed to compare numbers because you don't, they don't want you getting what you're worth ask for because money. they might have to pay you more money. Yep. And especially if you're a woman doing the same job a man is doing, mm-hmm. because then obviously you're being paid less. Or if you're a person of color mm-hmm. and at bottom of the pay scale, there is a black woman yep. because she's going to be paid less than a white woman who's paid less than a white man. Yep. And it's also like crazy. It is. Girl. It should all be normalized. If if the going rate for this job is thirty two dollars an hour, then everybody should start at thirty two dollars an hour. Agreed. You know, not yeah. well. I like they. One of the th- I mean I'm jumping the middle. So I'm interrupting myself. One of the things I I know also from watching this person is when you negotiate your salary, which you absolutely should wherever you work. Yeah. That you have to be knowledgeable about what the median salary is. Yes. So if I come to you as saying, well, I want to work for you, um, I guess I'll ask for $20 an hour. Well, but if you're paying everybody else $25 an hour and you're like, well, she'll take 20 yep. I'm going to pay her 20 Yep. Then, then you're screwing yourself. Yep. And so, I feel like if find out what, and I, I don't know when this became career advice, but find out whatever job it is that you want to do. And there's usually a scale. It pays between sixty and $72,000 a year. And when you go to negotiate, start higher. Yeah. Start, I want 70 grand a year. And then they'll say something else, right? And then they'll come back with, well, it starts at 60. How about I pay you 62? And that's called negotiation. Yeah. But if you have education, and here's the thing, more and more and more employers and um, universities believe that lived experience and like having uh, work experience and things that you've gone through are crucial. And so a lot of government agencies, DEQ, the Department of Environmental Quality, for example, they want to hire people, maybe not even if you're qualified, but if you are a marginalized or a minority, like a person who is marginalized, you go to the top of the heap. Do you know what I mean? Just because they were trying to diversify their workforce. And sometimes lived experience is more valuable than an education. So absolutely negotiate what you're worth and don't think because you don't have like, you know, higher education that you're not worth more. Right. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Are we done? We are done. Thank God. We've come to the end of yet another hour. Uh, and so we will yeah. be back next week. By the way, yeah. BTW, this yeah. is the first episode of season three. Oh my God. Happy first episode. I know. So, so we're starting our third year <coughs> of this podcast, which it has flown by. It sure has. It doesn't feel like three years. That's weird. Um, I know. And I'm just like so tired from doing this though, because I've been sick for 10 days straight. Yeah. So yesterday was the first day I felt okay. And I'm still a so coffee. You talk for an hour now. You need a nap. Yeah, girl. I'm like, <laughs> well, you can lay down with your dog and your cat and watch Grace and Frank. Oh my God. You know, I, I will. just have a little, a little night night time. I will, girl. Don't you worry. But in the meantime, we're going to wrap it up here. And so <clears throat> like, share and subscribe. Go to iHeartRadio or whoever your podcasting yeah. app is and search for It Would Seem As Though. But if you're hearing me, you've already, you're already there. But yeah. tell a friend. Yeah. And uh, if you would like to send us messages like our good friend Lori Lee. Yeah. And thank you, Lori Lee. We love hearing from you. Sure do. I think you're a little crazy for being somewhere where it's negative 60 degrees. But God bless you. Yeah. Girl. And thank you for listening. Yeah. Um, you can do that at It Would Seem As Though at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And we're here every week. This yeah. we're really, we come out every Wednesday. So, but I'm tired, so oh, I'm well. leaving. We have to go now because Anna yeah. needs to go now. Mm, bye. Bye. Mm. It was so much though.